What's up, YouTubeatrons? This is Matt Greer here, aka Robots Against Children. Uh, today, I thought I'd do something a little different and just do kind of a quick studio tour. I've got to move real soon, and uh, all this is going to have to be packed up, put into boxes. Um, so I thought I'd kind of inventory it, show it off a little bit, um, kind of for myself too, because I've I've enjoyed working in this space. Uh, hopefully, I'll get something. Uh, put together when I get into the new space, but that might be a while since I've been so busy lately um, <clears throat> So this one's more for the gear nerds uh, not gonna be doing a song this time But I hope you find it interesting and I'll kind of talk about each piece in the studio and maybe reference some of the tracks I've made with it and uh, try to put those links down below in the description um, As always your support is appreciated uh, click the subscribe button in the lower right corner if you haven't already and likes and comments always helpful and if you have any questions about anything let me know uh, and if there's anything in here that you might want a specific demonstration or tutorial for let me know I'm happy to, happy to do those too all right thanks y'all so uh, we'll start the tour now all right so we'll go ahead and just start with this kind of shelf area over here this is kind of the staging area where I keep things while I don't need them. Um, up here in the left we've got an old school drum fire DF500. Uh, this is kind of that noise trigger based kind of drum machine. Uh, this would have had triggers that would run to like a real drum set and those triggers would initiate each sound. Uh, they're all basically the same sound engine and you tune each one um, to the correct pitch and intonation that you want. Uh, pretty cool sounding thing. You can find demos of these on YouTube here. I've never actually used it in a track, but uh, I do plan to one of these days. This was actually on loan from a friend of mine, so uh, I'm kind of just its caretaker right now, but it's, uh, it's pretty cool. You don't see these very often, very rare. Uh, over here, the Oberheim DX. Uh, these are classic. I mean, on so many hip-hop records, um, a lot of 80s reggae use these a lot. Um, uh, Blue Order, I think, or New Order's Blue Monday, I think, uses this machine. It may be the DMX on that one, but the sounds are very similar between both. Um, anyway, classic drum machine. Uh, Comtrues uses these kind of sounds a lot, along with Lin drums, those kind of things. Uh, and then we have the Moog Opus 3. This is sort of a brass and string and organ type synth. Um, it has kind of its own sound. Uh, I believe uh, the Beach Boys used this on some stuff in the latter part of their records. Um, cool synth. It's uh, only about 75% functional right now. Uh, it needs a little love. Some of the pots are scratchy and one of the three, I can't remember if it was the string or brass or what, but one of those voices doesn't work. So needs some love. Uh, that's the only problem with old ones like that is they need a lot of attention. Okay, so the Spectralis. Um, I got this a little while ago. I got rid of a few things and got this in replacement and well, I haven't really had time to learn it. <laughs> it's a powerful machine, but um, I'd be lying if I said it was easy to pick up. Been watching tutorials, reading the manual, but I haven't done much with it. There's my Reface CP. Uh, if anyone's looking for just good electro mechanical piano stuff, this thing sounds really, really good. Um, some folks don't like the mini keys, and I get that. You know, we have players out there that prefer full size keys. That's what they learned on. Um, but I will say that for mini keys, these have quite a nice feel, actually. Although I'm not really a, a keys player. I mean, I can a little, but uh, I'm more of a synthesizer guy, so I'm okay with it. Um, down here is just kind of an oddball collection of stuff. We've got uh, an old MIDI box there. I've got a Launch Control XL um, for the rare occasion that I do use a DAW. Um, I've got a VT3 there for vocal effects. Got a JX03 Boutique. Now, I'm going to be honest, I did not want to like those Boutique things when they came out. I just, they didn't appeal to me, but uh, I heard a demo from a friend of mine using this and I was like, wow, that actually sounds really nice. And I got my hands on it and uh, I have to concur, it's a nice little synthesizer. It's, uh, it's pretty good to use. Uh, if somebody's looking for some old school poly sounds, uh, especially on a budget, 
you'd be hard pressed to find something better than one of these uh, first generation boutiques. TB3 there for the acid heads. Mono tribe with uh, the yellow overlay. Then just some little bits and bobs. I got a stylophone here, a couple pocket operators. This is a homemade drone synth that I got off of eBay. Um, there is a track that I'm using that on. Uh, it's on my YouTube channel and on my SoundCloud. I'll leave a link below. And let's see, there's a Meeblip anode. It's the white edition. And then we just got some random pedals down here. This here is a homemade talk box. One of these days I'll demo that. Uh, actually turned out <laughs> quite well. It, it sounds very good. Um, in here we've got a couple cases of stuff. Microphone on top. The bottom case is the lunch box that you might have seen on other videos. And I've got my turntable there. Star Wars toys, of course. Uh, Alright, going over here. This is kind of the main mixing area. I'll back up so you can see that a little bit better. It's a bit crowded at the moment. Um, but lots of things on here. Novation circuit. Electron rhythm. A4. Some stuff in the rack there. Got a mic pre. My, uh, my main inputs for the computer. That's an old Motu uh, MIDI patch bay. I just kind of use it as a, as a splitter now. Um, it's so old that the hookups are actually parallel port and I don't have any software to run it. Just a normal patch bay back there. Power conditioner. Crappy compressor from Alesis, the 3630. Uh, often quoted as being used by Daft Punk on their first record, which is true, but they also had a lot of nice gear on that record too, so it's not the only compressor. Uh, it's not good for much, but it will do a pumping side chain pretty well. Uh, a couple other patch bays, spaghetti wires, um, two of my favorite pedals there. I've got my Flashback X4, and back there behind the wires are the uh, Ventide Space, Volca FM, we've got the Mono Machine, man I love that synth, uh, Machine Drum, Base Station 2, Reface CS. So yeah, um, various other things here. We've got this old, Ham not Hammond, I wish it was Hammond. Uh, it's a chord organ, uh, which if you're not familiar, basically means it's air powered. It's got a blower inside that pushes air through reeds that open when you depress the keys. It sounds kind of like an accordion in a box. Um, this thing is neat. I got it from my wife's grandma. Uh, we rescued it from her basement. And uh, it's fun to play, but it's completely out of tune with anything else. So it hasn't shown up on very much in terms of recording, but uh, it has a kind of a neat sound, very French, I guess, in a way. Um, I do have uh, one track that I recorded it onto the end of. I'll put a link for that one just so you can hear what it sounds like. It sounds pretty cool. It's kind of hard to record because of the air motor inside. But uh, yeah, it's just kind of a neat, neat old thing. Uh, this is actually a family heirloom. This is the Micromoog synthesizer that belonged to my wife's uncle. Um, he was a recording artist. They were actually uh, signed to Warner Brothers back in the day. And uh, this was his, and uh, I'm honored to have it. Uh, not only do uh, I cherish it, but I absolutely love the sound of it too. It's just this old school, raw, meaty Moog sound. It's, it's, it's big. Uh, and then we've got the Juno 106 down below. And it's gonna drive some people crazy, but I don't really care for that synthesizer all that much. Um, and I got some, you know, hand drums, shakers, that kind of things. Uh, that's pretty much the whole space. Um, you know, I got some more guitars back here, just various junk stuffed into corners everywhere. Cheap MIDI controller. That's a Wii uh, rock band keyboard. And it's actually a MIDI controller. You can buy those for about 10 to 15 bucks. So, and it works. It actually works. Uh, cheap Squire electric guitar. This Electroland amp, uh, a buddy of mine built that, and I've got it here on, on loan from him. Um, you see I've got bass things in the corners, 
behind the mixing position. These are uh, Personas Eris 8s, the monitors. And that's about it. So yeah, after I move, I'll uh, try to get everything set up again and we'll do another tour. But um, thanks for watching. And again, if you have any questions or you want a demo of anything or a tutorial or anything like that, let me know. I haven't really done that kind of stuff in the past, but uh, you know, maybe to diversify the channel a little bit, I'll start adding that kind of thing. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day and we'll see you later.